Howdy, I'm William Fitzgerald Cody, better known as Buffalo Bill Cody. My life spanned from 1847 to 1917, a time of incredible change. America grew to the Pacific, suffered several violent conflicts, accepted waves of immigrants during what is known as the Age of Migration, and tamed the frontier at a price. Native Americans were herded into reservations. Their way of life on the frontier came to an end. I found fame as a frontiersman, buffalo hunter, scout, and Indian fighter through dime novels, which recounted the virtuous adventures of a single hero, often me. Then on stage, reaching the apex of fame in my Wild West show as showman and international celebrity. In this episode, I will discuss my childhood, which lasted from birth until the age of 11. Why those years? Because at age 11, I lost my father. Upon his passing, I became the family's primary provider. I had to get jobs, earn and provide money to support our family. At that moment, my youth was over. From then on, I was required to act in an adult capacity. My ability to assume this role was largely attributable to my father. Let's start at the beginning. I was born in Iowa, then for a few years lived in Toronto. Afterwards, our family moved to Kansas, the frontier. This move created my first lasting impression. We moved to Kansas in style. Our goods were carried in a strong frontier wagon, while we, my father, brother, sisters, and mom, traveled in a carriage. Father's choice of vehicles was not just a matter of comfort. To him, it was critical to match vehicles with the task and to move in a way that made a point. In this case, visibly demonstrating that we were moving to Kansas with purpose, deliberately, confidently, we were headed to success. Wherever we stopped, people admired the way and the means by which we traveled. I took all that in, especially people's reactions. As an adult, I applied the same approach to the scenes in my Wild West show. We were educating our audiences about life on the frontier with visual sights, sounds, people, animals, exhibitions, displays, in the movement of civilization to the frontier in style and grandeur. My father was a wanderer, just like so many of our day, pioneers moving to the frontier in search of a better life. During my first 11 years, father pursued a variety of callings, stagecoach driver, Indian trader, farm manager, surveyor, community builder, politician. I learned to hunt, to ride, to be self-reliant. I began to love everything about the frontier. However, when I was with my father, he had my total attention. He purposely exposed me to his activities and took me on his trips. We had no internet. No phones, no TV, no electricity. Distractions were very few and very, very different. Keep in mind that where they existed at all, our schools were one-room affairs. I rarely attended. <laughs> my education came from children see, children do. And with my father, boy, did I. I watched him in his dealings with newly arriving pioneers, be they heading to the Pacific Coast, farmers, settlers, Easterners, or immigrants from Europe. I experienced his interactions with Indians and I had my own, learning their skills and ways. I watched my father's involvement in community building where he was regarded as a leading citizen. I admired and adopted his honesty. He was a man of his word, and so was I. 
During my leadership of the Wild West Show, my employees, cowboys, Indians, Japanese, Georgian, men and women, knew this was the case. We were fellow travelers. I remember a picnic that my father organized for settlers and Indians in the same setting. Their sheer presence, even though they sat and celebrated at separate tables, provided a contrasting and distinct view of two different cultures on the same set. It turned out to be a powerful image for me. That picnic created and translated into a more complex setting, bringing cowboys and Indians, some of who had fought each other, to the ring for performances in my Wild West show. The reaction to that picnic setting became something much bigger, a spectacle embraced and loved by audiences for three decades. Then there was the time I spent with a relative who performed as a trick rider on horseback. He showed up from nowhere, well, California, at that time a universal way. <laughs> Father invited him to stay. He taught me. I eagerly picked up advanced writing skills. Father approved of my interest in pursuit of writing expertise despite the fact my older brother had been crushed by a horse. Riding was critical to my success as a buffalo hunter, scout, and pony express rider, and in the ring chasing tame buffalo in my Wild West show and more. By the way, so you know, my detractors consign my claims to being a pony express rider as pure myth. Well, neither the audiences nor I cared. It became one of their best loved performances. <laughs> then there was my father's experience with politics, which taught me so much about dealing with people in politics, including the associated risks and consequences. However, when I was eight, father accepted an impromptu request to speak at a public gathering on whether or not Kansas should become a slave state. Now as I think back, it could have been a setup. Although he did not oppose slavery, he spoke against its spread to Kansas. Violence ensued and he was stabbed. I was involved in his escape home. For the next three years, he was persecuted and even hunted. I ferried messages to him, at times having to outride his pursuers. He succumbed to the consequences of his stab wounds three years later. Father's community and political legacy left an indelible mark on me. In adulthood, I contributed to the building of churches and community structures, and even sponsored the founding of a city named after me, Cody, Wyoming. I also learned a lifelong lesson, and that is, when dealing with politicians and the public, be circumspect, to carefully measure my words. These traits were constantly in play in my many interactions with the public, community leaders, politicians, and even European royalty, resulting in not only they being comfortable with me in positive reviews, but also in the welcomes extended to our shows across America and in Europe. So, with Father's passing at his bequest, I was tasked to provide for my mother and sisters, a request I could not but honor. I was only 11. However, even at that age, I had the skills to take on work on the frontier and more. The skills I learned through him, the responsibilities he gave me, the exposure to places and people were foundational. The need to be a provider and caring, whether to family, community, or employees, nor for that matter, animals in my show never left me. However, there was one negative consequence. I gave away 
and through bad investments lost my fortune. <laughs> Nevertheless, I had a wonderful life. As for animals, how caring. As buffalo were at the brink of extinction, my animals formed a part of their conservation efforts. Losing just one had a significant impact on the buffalo's existence. Just imagine, tame buffalo running around our show ring with me chasing after them, simulating a hunt, shooting blanks. Well, once they escaped our camp into the streets of a town in which that we were performing. We held a great roundup, not losing one. No one was hurt. In today's world though, every one of them would have been shot as a danger to the public. <laughs> Before closing, I cannot leave out the role of my mother and sisters. Women had a very tough life on the frontier, undergoing significant hardships. Not just responsible for the household, participating in farm work, hiring themselves out for wages, but most importantly, caring for children. And in some cases, suffering the heartache and grief of watching them die, continuing to carry on. Since I did not get much formal education, what I learned, reading and writing, for example, was clearly the result of my mother's influence. My mother, Mary, was a teacher and on several occasions, she was instrumental in forming a school accessible even to me. I preferred the outdoors. <laughs> One of my sisters, Julia, also played a key role in ensuring I not only became literate, but I developed a liking for reading. Later on in this series, you will hear a story how being literate kept me sane when I was marooned in the wilderness, snowed in with a broken leg. These views of the hardships women faced in our household carried over in my treatment of female employees paying them the same wages as paid to the men in my Wild West shows. They were an integral part of my show. Those first 11 years showed me the critical role of family and family life in a classic case of children see, children do, including development of my leadership skills. We'll explore the further development and use of my skills from age 11 on through my maturity in the next episode of this series. Until next time, happy trails.